Hey guys, even here, and in this video we got some very exciting and possibly game-changing news regarding classic physique. So, Tyler Mannion just announced the new classic physique weight caps. And not all the classic physique weight caps are gonna be just changed equally, no. As they said, the taller classic physique competitors used to have an advantage. So, they were given additional 2 pounds, only 2 pounds, for the guys over 6 foot. However, the shortest guys in this list were given up to 7 freaking pounds. So, this could be very much game changing. Guys like Brion Ainsley, Terence Ruffin, who have been struggling to make the weight, are gonna have much easier time now. They're gonna be able to progress even more. And this is gonna, let's say, level the play field. Am I happy about this announcement? Well, since I'm six foot two, I would say no, because one day I hope to compete in IV Pro League if I turn pro. And I would have, I, I would love to have an advantage over the shorter guys, but I guess that they fixed this uh, apparent mistake. So now the shorter guys are gonna have more room to grow. What does this mean? I mean, how much will this affect the, the, the Mr. Olympia? Mainly, that's what I'm concerned about. This year's Mr. Olympia. I mean, take a look at this photo. Here, Chris Bumstead is just killing these two guys. Even though they are amazing classic physique competitors, Chris is just dwarfing them. He's killing them because he's so much bigger. And Terence Ruffin, for example, he was second at the Mr. Olympia uh, two years ago. He has an amazing physique, truly, extraordinary, fantastic, amazing looking classic physique. Check it out, guys. I mean, look at his posing routine. This was just exceptional. Now, imagine this with additional 7 pounds of muscle. And you guys probably know that he was really struggling to make the weight. He was he was doing those escalator steps uh, in, in a bunch of clothes just to get just to remove a couple of pounds of water to make the weight. So like he's gonna have much easier time now. Uh, he doesn't have enough time probably to add more muscle, but he's gonna be able to come in fuller, maybe a little bit bigger. He's not gonna have to struggle to make the weight. So we can expect a much better version of Terence Ruffin at this year's Mr. Olympia, and even better one next year. So no, his physique is not maxed out, he has a ton of room to grow now. And if you don't think 7 pounds is a lot, go to the grocery store and buy 7 pounds of chicken and check it out. Check out how much of meat, how much meat that is. And imagine placing all that meat on one's physique, on Terence's physique. You know, that's a lot of muscle, 7 pounds is a lot of, of muscle for somebody who is this shredded. Sheer muscle, contractile tissue, 7 pounds is a lot. So it's gonna definitely change a lot of physiques. This new information is pretty much game changing for, especially for those, cla for those shorter classic bodybuilders. Uh, as far as the taller guys, I mean, let's be honest, 2 pounds isn't really that much, especially compared to 7 pounds. But, you know, with their frame, with their height, Two pounds can also be something, so it can also help, you know, for some guys who are already at the weight cap, who are struggling to make the weight. I think guys like Chris Bumstead, I think Chris Bumstead barely made the weight. He was, he was, if you remember guys, uh, those vlog videos of his where he was stretching, trying to get a little bit taller so he can make the weight. But I think he made the weight and he had like two pounds left. So if he adds those four freaking pounds... And even if he doesn't, if he just shows up the way he was showing up these past couple of years, I don't think anybody, including those shorter guys who add those 7 pounds, are gonna be able to catch Chris Bumstead. He's just in a league of his own. But some other bodybuilders who are at lower levels, for example, Wesley Vissers, who was 8 at the Mr. Olympia last year, they might have a slight disadvantage. Or, should I say, the taller guys will lose the advantage that they used to have. Now, there is another information about classic physique, and it is regarding the, the heights. So, a lot of people were, were arguing about this, were complaining about this. The fact that they don't really measure classic physique guys once. They measure them every time they compete. And sometimes they can be taller, sometimes they can be shorter. They might be aiming for certain weight, but they measure them shorter than they think they are, and then they can't make the weight. So, the MPC and IBB Pro League changed this. From now on, the classic physique guys will be measured. 
I think three times, as Tyler explained, three times after they turn pro and the, the average of those, of those three heights are gonna be their official height and that's gonna be like written down in their pro cards and it's gonna be forever, they're not gonna be measuring their heights every time they compete and I like that, I definitely like that. As far as the MPC and MPC Worldwide, the amateur divisions, it's gonna be the same as the pro, only 10 pounds less in the amateur league so those are the news regarding the classic physique uh, i think it's very interesting it might change a lot of things but am i happy about it as a taller classic physique competitor no not really but is this fair i think it is i do think taller classic physique guys used to have an advantage against the shorter guys but whatever you guys think whatever you feel like tell me down below in the comment section Oh, and yeah, Terence Ruffin just uploaded a physique update today, he did a little guest posing, you probably saw that as well, but here is a proper physique update at 9 weeks out of Legion Sports Fest. So yes, he is gonna be competing this year, and as he says, people can stop asking him if he's retired. So he's competing at Legion, he's gonna try and qualify for the Mr. Olympia, uh, and I already asked him a question, as you can see in the comments, I asked him, is this new rule gonna change anything about his approach? Is he gonna try now to come in bigger and fuller or something like that? We'll see. Anyways, his conditioning is very good for nine weeks out. Uh, last time we saw him on stage in the Mr. Olympia, he was not in condition. And I think that cost him a couple of spots. That's why he placed sixth and he was second a year before. And he wasn't completely off. He was just a little bit... Um, his conditioning wasn't exactly perfect. So I think that's why he's so lean already at this point. He's not gonna risk showing up uh, out of shape again. And yeah, I think he's gonna win Legion and I think he's gonna show up looking amazing at a Mr. Olympia. How amazing are we talking about here? Placing second again? I mean, beating Urs and Ramon? Is that even a possibility? Well, now with this new weight cap, anything is possible, really. Alright, next up we have Hunter Labrada with another physique update. I'm sure you guys all saw that video of his, but we got a couple of really good photos under some really good lighting and in all these, man, Hunter looks so crazy. Honestly, I, I was expecting him to look better, but this much? I didn't see this, I mean, I, I, I heard guys like Ian Wallier and like Fuad saying that he's a changed bodybuilder, that he's so much better this year, but until that previous video, I didn't see this coming, and now in these photos, damn, he's looking impressive, and I'm thinking, if anybody beats him at Texas, uh, let's not even talk about Tampa, he's gonna win Tampa easily, but at Texas, if anybody beats him, and I'm saying anybody, I'm thinking uh, Carlos Thomas Jr. and Andrew Jack, if any of those two guys beat him, I have them winning the Mr. Olympia, or like placing in the top three, at least, because Hunter looks so good right now, that I think he is gonna be in conversation for that top four, top five, and a Mr. Olympia for sure, because he's looking crazy right now, so in this most muscular, as you can see, looking insane, but check this out, this is like what I'm most impressed about, uh, it's his back, so I never saw him this condition from behind, I never saw this kind of glute separation, this hamstring separation, and I, and I never saw his back being this developed, and this detailed, and this dry, and he has um, a lot more time to fill out, to relax his body, to carb up, to dry out, and to just look insane. But this, this photo, this is what I was, what I was most impressed with. I mean, look at those separations. Look at those striations in his lower pecs. And that's how, that's why, when I know that somebody is really conditioned. This is something I was chasing for my previous uh, show. I mean, of course, you can compare me to any of these guys. I'm way smaller, but I did have this kind of separation in my lower chest, and that's something I was chasing and it's like one of the last things that shows up and hunter has it with all his mass he has that so yeah that tells me that he is really lean really lean you're gonna see how lean he actually is once he carves up once he fills out and that muscle starts really pushing the, the skin and this video man it's also very very impressive so here you can see like if he was flat if he died down way too hard and like lost some muscle and fullness you would have seen it in this video under this the daylighting you could you could see everything here but no like he still has that roundness he still has the fullness and he's not even full yet 
I'm sure he's very much depleted. And he was pushing cardio like crazy until a couple of days ago. So until the showtime, he's gonna look amazing. And that's Tampa, guys, we're talking about. After that Tampa show, and it's gonna be an easy qualification for him. I hope he's gonna continue competing. I hope he's gonna do Texas as well. And he's gonna be he's gonna have an option to do a little sort of mini rebound into the show. So there is no way he can gain any fat <laughs> from, te from Tampa to Texas. He can only look fuller and just bigger and more impressive and harder in that one week or two weeks, how many it is between these two shows. So yeah, that Texas package is going to be something insane, guys. And I can't wait to see it. And like Hunter, I mean, he's one of those bodybuilders that, is, that received a lot of hate because he is the, 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 the son of his father and people are expecting a lot from him. And like he is being hyped up probably a little bit too much. And he has a lot of haters for that. A lot of people don't think he deserves the hype that he that he gets. But yeah, I guess he's proving uh, haters wrong. I, I hope he's gonna do that this year. I hope he's gonna prove to everybody that he's worthy of his reputation, of the hype, and that he's going to destroy all these shows. All right, next up we got Regan Grimes. And we all saw his updates from the front. We all saw the improvements that he made from the front, but we all know that his strongest body part is his back, and look at this! Look at this freaking wee taper, this crazy looking cobra back! So he definitely did add, uh, he definitely did improve his back, he added more muscle to it, uh, he definitely progressed from the front, you know, in those shoulders and arms and chest and a little bit of legs probably, but from the back, I guess he improved even more, because this bag looks super crazy wide. What the hell happened to those freaking lats? How the hell did he do this? Look at this. Look at the lats when he spreads them. And look at the thin waist, the small waist. Look at this. This is crazy, man. <laughs> Damn. So, yeah. Regan is known for the back, and his back is still there. It's actually better than ever before, if you ask me. So, yeah, I mean, he's doing the Europa Pro against Goodwito. It's going to be a very interesting comparison. Is he going to be able to beat him? We'll see. But are we going to witness an improved version of Regan Grimes at this year's Europa Pro? Yes. Yes, I'm absolutely sure about that. It's definitely going to be a more impressive physique. I just hope Milos is going to pick him right. I hope he's going to pick perfectly and like bring the absolute best that he can bring. And, you know, do the best that he can. Show us what he was working on the entire year that he took off. But, yeah, I I'm quite positive. He definitely did do something. He made positive changes to his physique. Look at this back, man. It's so crazy. And for the end of this video, I gotta go over this new physique update of Derek Lansford. And he says that he added 10 pounds from last year. And I absolutely believe him that he is very precise with this number. I believe he, he probably underestimated himself because he is extremely lean. The entire year he was super, super lean and he just kept getting bigger and bigger. And the changes that he made, I mean, he did add a lot of muscle to his upper body everywhere, basically. But his legs are like completely different legs, he added so much thickness to those freaking legs, it's ridiculous, it's looking funny, I would have to say, I don't know if this can hurt him even, because I don't know if I like these proportions all too much now, I mean, his legs are just looking, I don't know, man, so massive, especially for his height, it just looks, it looks, it looks nutty, it looks silly, so yeah, it looks very, very freaky, maybe he's gonna lose a little bit on that aesthetics factor, Maybe it's gonna be completely different once he's lean. Maybe it's really not gonna be an issue, but like right now, he looks, I don't know, I would say a little bit too big, honestly. But that's probably because he's in the off season and he's still bloated. And I mean, I can't say he has any fat. He basically has zero fat on his body. Uh, he just holds some water. But once he's, you know, dehydrated and super lean, it's probably gonna look more aesthetic. But like, did he gain muscle? Did he progress? Man, he progressed a ton. He definitely did progress a lot. And you guys remember the last year, he didn't know if he was gonna do the Open like until, I don't know, a like couple of months out of Olympia. So he wasn't really pushing the weight the entire offseason. And this year, he did just that. He really tried to get as big as possible and he succeeded. I mean, 10 pounds of 
uh, sheer muscle that's a lot that's definitely a lot especially for somebody who's already second in the mr olympia yeah yeah it's gonna be really i don't know i have no idea who's gonna win the mr olympia it's going to be really competitive uh, but yeah, once again, I think it's gonna be probably between Samson and Derek. I have I have Samson. I have to say I have Samson. But then there is Nick, who probably gained like 30 pounds of muscle <laughs> in a year. And let's not forget our reigning Mr. Olympia, Hari Japan. Also, a lot of other great guys like uh, I don't know Hunter Labrada, Andrew Jack, uh, maybe even guys like Carlos Thomas Jr. Damn, it's gonna be a very very competitive, very interesting Mr. Olympia. Uh, whatever you guys think who's gonna win tell me down below in the comment section like this video if you enjoyed it and, and guys if you want to support me and this channel you want me to keep making this awesome content for you guys there is the way how you can support me and that is by simply clicking on the link down below in the comment section and just buying any of the old school lab supplements you like um, for example pre-workout or protein powder they are all amazing products super high quality products you guys won't make a mistake uh, the main thing is use the code even if you want to support me if you want to help me and that's gonna give you a 15% discount. So thank you guys so much for all your attention. Once again, like the video, subscribe to the channel. Thank you so much. All the best and bye-bye.